So if you spend much time on YouTube, you definitely see a lot of videos about people's like uh, number one tool, you know, favorite tool or whatever. Well, uh, I've got a problem with my number one tool. Uh, my best tool, like the thing I use every day and totally rely on and cannot get by without, that's my truck. And um, transmission is shot. Uh, last three or four days, it's gotten to the point where I've got reverse first and second and everything else just slips. So I've got to abandon the silver truck for now. I limped it home last night after a job and got it in the driveway, so that's good. And as you saw, I am switching over to the Ford. Not entirely reliable. 1997 Ford F-250. It's got some great features. Um, you know, some like little custom details like this. You know, like the door latch doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta like reach around outside to pull the handle. It's got a few too many miles and is not super dependable. But anyway, that's what I've got. I gotta rely on it. So I've got a job uh, in the next town over. I'm going over there uh, right now. And this weekend I'm gonna be searching on YouTube and Google or whatever for how to replace the transmission in the Chevy. I am a maintenance guy, I love fixing stuff, but I am crap when it comes to fixing cars. Anyway, that's where we're at. Handyman Mobile is now this beast. Now you saw me build most of this uh, wheelchair ramp, kind of access ramp railing a while back, a couple weeks ago. And you know, at that point I got it roughed in, but it needed some finishing touches. It needed those hinges put on the gate, and then it needed some balustrades for the gate, and it needed some carpet. It was kind of just rough OSB for the ramp itself, and that's not the best to walk on over time, so I was gonna lay down some carpet now. You can see it's a little bit old school here, cutting stuff on the tailgate and on the ground and everything, but you know that old adage that the carpenter never blames his tools? Or maybe it's that the good carpenter shouldn't blame their tools? I don't have all my stuff with me, I don't have my setup I'm familiar with, but I should still be able to build stuff level, plumb, and true, and even with a little bit of style to it. And that was my struggle today, just to get stuff done in an effective way, you know, to do a good job basically without having my full kit and my comfortable setup that I'm super familiar with. carpet, uh, swinging gate, dealio. Um, I'm kind of amazed, but you know, I just threw everything in the old truck that I thought I'd need and I ended up having everything I needed. It also stopped raining, so everything didn't get totally soaked. And that brought me to this basement tile job where I actually spent a couple hours for several days just getting this done. And the backstory here is that another dude, another person tiled almost all of the basement. You know, just, just big old basement, a couple rooms, and then didn't quite finish this utility room. And I didn't quite get the full story, but it sounds like that was like 20 years ago or something. Long time ago. 
These guys, they still had the tile sitting there in boxes, ready to go. Unfortunately, I couldn't match the grout exactly to the right color because the old grout was kind of variable. You know, it looked like maybe it hadn't even been sealed, so it had some mineral buildup and whatnot. The other kind of hinky thing about this tile job was that you could not rely on your spacers because the previous dude, he was kind of he was kind of like a creative tiler, you know, like one gap was a quarter inch and another was an eighth and another was a little bit bigger than that and it just wasn't perfectly regular. So to match to it, I had to kind of have some different sized gaps. In the end, I think it all worked out pretty well. But uh, you know, it took it was kind of like tiling by eye instead of tiling by spacer. The other funkadelic thing about this tile job is that I had to move some stuff. I had to move the well pressure tank out of the way, tile a bunch of stuff, move the pressure tank back, and then tile where it was. I had to do that with the washer dryer too. I didn't move the water heater. That would have meant uh, changing the plumbing a quarter inch shorter so that water heater would actually be taller. Anyway, you know how tile goes. You lay your tile. Then you gotta pack your grout, then you gotta let that dry, then you gotta wipe up your grout, then you gotta let that dry, then you gotta wipe off your haze. And then when you're done with that and it's all dry, you can finally seal your grout. And you know, it's not a lot of work, but it's a lot of waiting to do the next job. And eventually it was done and it looked pretty good for a basement tile job. I put on Facebook Messenger uh, hey, anyone have an eight foot long topper that would fit an F-250? And um, I said I'd pay a hundred bucks. That seemed a little cheap to me. Anyway, some gal sends me a message. Hey, if you come pick this thing up, it's free. Uh, she's got an eight foot topper. So that's where I'm going. Um, in the car with uh, a trailer on the back. Cause you know, that F-250 on the highway, uh, a little bit dodgy. Anyway, uh, driving to the next state over to get a free topper. Sounds good to me. Uh, so we'll just talk real quick about how safe this is. I've got a load bar up there. It's not bowed too bad. A couple of straps. It's all kind of balanced, but you know, I wouldn't want to get under it. I like have any babies planned or here or anything. And then one other just insignificant issue. Uh, you can see I got this up to just about four inches too low uh, to back the truck under it. So. I'll probably have to, you know, finagle wiggle it to sort of get it up there. Uh, but next up, I gotta pull my roll cage. This is the end of an era. The roll cage is going out. That's uh, drop number one. Uh, you can see that the camper it's just a little bit funky uh, you know it's not exactly made for this model so we've got a 
uh, you know, sort of like an altitude issue here. And then also along the sides, uh, it's just made for a slightly more curved truck than this, but whatever, it's working. Uh, I just need to throw some tools in here and get off to a job. All right, so Handyman Diaries, Mad Max edition. I've got the uh, beater truck out on the road trying to get some jobs done. Next up was that door doctoring job. It was kind of like door dentistry. You know, this door had a kind of scuzzy bottom to it, rusted out. And I thought it was a good idea instead of replacing the door just to patch it. It's not too bad. It's got like a little rotted out wood here. But this seems good. I think what's going on with this door is just that it gets sheer water drainage down here and there's no drip cap of any kind. So I kind of think a little drip edge would do the door a lot of good. The door itself, uh, steel faced, kind of nice, big old window. It's got like, just a little bit of lubrication on the fastener. And then this is the good stuff down here. And if you haven't used one of these things before, it's an aluminum shoe. You know, just a straight up kind of U-shaped channel that you can fit on the bottom of your door. And the nice thing about it is that it's also got weather stripping, so you get a better seal down below. I was doing this house in Champagne that was like brand new, you know, totally fucked up. Nothing grounded, all overloaded boxes, weird, like untacked Use the wires. Sunny on that, man. I know, like it was new. It's probably like a 10 year old house. Well, oh, yeah, it was a short. You, you see it? Yeah, it's just disconnected. What is it you see? Just right there. What is it you see? Hot wire. Just off. Is it not see connected? That? Yeah, so it was, it, it would have been here. It would have been here. Um, but. Wait, that's the hot wire? Well, there's two. One comes in, one comes out. Okay. So the one coming out, either either every time I push something in, it was touching and arcing, oh, which did looked, did which looked like it might have. Doing that? But see, like whoever did this, like that's not even connected either. So anyway. Do you have a it. new plug? Yeah. Should be fine. This is old school. Great. I feel better. I feel safer. Wait, no, I don't. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. Shit. Try something else. My video is supposed to have the light turning on. <laughs> okay, try. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now the light's working. That's pretty bright. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for checking out my Handyman Diaries. Like I've said before, it bears repeating. This is not necessarily an account of how to do it. Instead, it's just a story of how I did it. Hit me with a comment down below if you are so inclined. It's always a blast hearing from you guys.